the plagues of Egypt have returned. We're here at GDC 2012 in the lovely St. Regis Hotel. We just got a really exciting sneak peek of the secret world, and today I'm joined by... Rui Kazai from Funcom. So tell us a little bit about what you showed today. It was very exciting. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, we just took a sneak peek about a couple of new areas in the secret world. Uh, that, as you know, is our flagship title uh, shipping in June. Uh, we're very excited about it, and as usual, we are committed to high-end quality PC graphics. So it's really good to see that the game is coming out looking so good, running so well, and it's just going to be great. The game is absolutely gorgeous. Talk about some of the things that you guys learned from Age of Conan and how you were able to bring these back into, bring that information back into the secret world to really just make it great. So in Funcom, we, we always just try to make the game look as, as good as it can. And the games we've been making have uh, go for that realistic look. And that lends itself very well to high quality, high end graphics and rendering features. So with Age of Conan, we, we um, uh, went to make a more old medieval type game. With Secret World, it's a modern world, so of course there are different challenges. But we did, we did learn a lot about performance, optimization, and making sure that a release goes as smooth as possible. Uh, so for the Secret World, we're a lot more confident that not only the experience looks good, but it will run well on everyone's machines, being the, the low end or, or the high end. Now, with the inclusion of DirectX 11, uh, we can push the technology even further, and we can safely say that we are one of the best looking MMOs out there. So, being from NVIDIA, our fans love technology, they love talking tech, they love hardware. Can you talk about some of the technology features that are in the secret world that pertain to NVIDIA and that our users will get a great experience from? Yeah, of course. Um, not only we upgraded the engine to DirectX 11, we also changed uh, from a uh, forward lighting to an inferred lighting engine or light prepass, which allows us to uh, add lots of interesting new features that are especially visible on uh, higher-end uh, graphics cards. Things like HDR with uh, uh, adaptive tone mapping, or uh, particle fog, or uh, ambient occlusion, both high frequency and low frequency ambient occlusion. Things like uh, FXAA that we work together in NVIDIA to develop and integrate, that runs great on all kinds of configurations and just provides a, a nicer, higher quality uh, picture. Uh, and very recently we've um, uh, done DirectX 11 features themselves, not just because it's easy to say that you're running a game in DirectX 11, but it doesn't necessarily mean it looks better. You need to actually put some work into it. So the, um, the main thing we are doing that, that really adds up is um, tessellation, where instead of just having a texture that pretends to have geometry, which is a normally a normal map, uh, we take that texture and create a displacement map that then generates geometry at runtime. So it's not just the pebbles on the road that from certain angles look like they have depth and volume. We actually take that fake depth and volume, convert it to real geometry. So we're pushing millions and millions of triangles just to get this smoother picture. And it produces some amazing results that we will be able to showcase in some time from now. Can you talk about what areas tessellation will be Im implemented in? Is it just terrain? Is it character models? Is it building or complete environment? So we, we are at different stages and in different parts, and we are not entirely sure we, which of them will be ready, but for sure ground tessellation and model tessellation, as in static model tessellation, we are going to have. And then if we're doing it on characters or not, depends on timelines. We are committed to delivering a solid experience, and we will not just add more features to, to make it look good. We, will, we prefer to get the features ready, solid, good, well-performing, and then when we have those, we move on to more. So we, we have this also a uh, new thing that no game has done before, which is called displacement aware skinning, where because of we create this extra geometry, if you're not careful, uh, the, when the, uh, uh, the player character is moving, the feet will intersect this new geometry because it's not really aware of it because this new geometry is just on the GPU and the CPU that controls the animations isn't aware of that. But we fixed that. So now the feet will actually not intersect this new geometry. And it might sound like a small thing, but it really breaks immersion when suddenly your characters are you know, moving across the geometry that's there and it, it doesn't look good. So we've, we've done that too, just to make sure that the tessellation experience is really good. That's exciting to hear. It's the little attention to detail yeah. that just puts things over the top. So there are so many MMOs out there that have cookie cutter classes and builds and there's there, you have healers and tanks and then they've each got a specific spec that has to be built just a certain way to fight each boss. There are no character classes in, in Secret World. So talk a little bit about the decision making process behind that and what you guys feel it brings to the game uh, from the ability to realistically be anything you want at any time. 
I think the important thing there is that we realize that all MMORPGs are doing the same thing. We, we're cutting into this pattern of just having classes. And one of the, the most frustrating things for players is that uh, maybe they have a friend that just started playing, they, and you've been playing for a few months. So you have this high-level uh, character that cannot play with a friend. And there are different systems that different games do to try to level you down to play with your friend or level the friend up ar uh, artificially to make sure you can play together. But in the end, it would be a lot nicer if you could just, instead of... Have making a new character that's a lower level or using those artificial systems, you can just pick a different set of abilities that maybe you're not has, um, ever invested in so much and maybe you can play with that with your friend. Or when you go to a, to a boss encounter, to a dungeon, and you see, oh, my, my friend that's the tank isn't here today, so I can't do this dungeon. Well, with Secret World you can. You can have that flexibility to just go and adapt yourself to the situation and not get frustrated because you feel constrained in this in this rules of the game right in in the real in the real world you're not restricted you're not uh, when you're born you don't say oh i can only use hammers of course not <laughs> right if if you if you can aim and shoot but you can use a hammer of course you can pick up a hammer and bash at something you might not be very good at it to begin with but as you do it more and more you'll get better and that's the point of the game is that you can adapt to the situation, you can explore, you can play around and see, maybe you've always played fighter classes, but in the secret world, you go, well, I'm, I'm going to start by playing with uh, hammers and swords and stuff like that, but I want to try out an assault rifle. Maybe that would be cool, you know, and then you can. You can play around with it. It gives you the flexibility of not having to replay all the content again just because you want to try a different weapon. I think flexibility and re re reducing frustration for the players is the key. That, that's exciting. You hear that, guys? You're not going to have to cancel your raid because one healer didn't show up. So what's it been like to work with NVIDIA? How are we as a partner? It, it's been working really well. We've been working for, with NVIDIA for several years now, it, at least like five years, maybe even longer. And uh, we have a very uh, close partnership. We, work, we talk together all the time and uh, we, we challenge each other. And that's the interesting part is that we, we go to NVIDIA and we say, hey, we have this problem or we have this scene. How can we make this look better? How can we make this run better? Uh, and NVIDIA comes to us and say, hey, you guys, we, 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 we've thought about this. Can we implement this? And because we do MMOs, we have a key advantage over single player games is that we can implement these smaller things as the MMO is in its life cycle. So we can get this patched out to our live product. And we've, we've done that with Age of Conan, where we actually switched the, when we switched the render engine to inferred lighting instead of being forward lighting. Uh, we did lots of work there in cooperation with, uh, with NVIDIA, and that went live uh, two years after the game launched. So we have, we have that advantage that we, we, our game is not uh, put the box out and then forget about it. We maintain our games for a long time. Our uh, first MMO, Anarchy Online, uh, went had his 10 year anniversary last year wow. you know we we are committed to get the, the games running to get games well and to have a long running community of people that enjoy the game and that we keep on updating and this partnership with nvidia allows us to not only add more content but also make sure that uh, the game even if it's a bit older keeps on running a more modern hardware has some fancy features upgrades things to get the players excited and the game's looking great that's encouraging to hear. One of the big things for gamers is ensuring that there's post-launch support for the game. So very encouraging to hear that. Um, will the game support 3D Vision? Yes, the game will support 3D Vision. It's, um, it's there. It's uh, working. We will, it will be there. No problems. Awesome. Will it also support surround, so multi-monitor? Yes, yeah, definitely. We, we actually have uh, tested and we play with it once in a while internally just because it looks so cool when you have lots of monitors and... It's an MMO, so there are always more UI elements. There are more, uh, you know, team elements and raid elements and things like that. So having many monitors is really great because you can just push stuff around and have the main combat area in your main screen and then the additional UIs in the separate screens. It's it's very useful. Very cool. Well, the game looks amazing. Um, very unique and different take on an MMO that I'm very excited to get my hands on and really invest some time in. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for, for the time.